Hi, welcome to another video about spring flowers here in the Texas Hill Country. Behind me is Nicotiana glauca, tree tobacco. This is actually a South American plant from Argentina that you'll find naturalized here and there in the hill country, usually near watercourses. And um, I think it's really kind of underused as a good deer resistant landscape plant. Um, this flower is actually spring, summer, and fall, and the foliage is mostly evergreen. And you can see it gets quite tall. This is um, maybe eight feet tall. Here's a close-up of the flowers. And no video on spring wildflowers would be complete without the Texas Blue Bonnet. There are actually different species of blue bonnets here in Texas, but this is the one that's abundant here in Central Texas, Lupinus texensis. And in this patch I found some white blue bonnets. Maybe you'd call them white bonnets. There's also a reddish colored blue bonnet that's been selected and you can buy seeds for that. This is Penstemon cobea also called prairie foxglove, a very striking wildflower in the spring. And another penstemon is the scarlet penstemon, penstemon trifloris. These are growing in a patch of yuccas. Here you can see the foliage. And this is Storksbill, Erodium Texanum. You'll see these growing right next to the pavement along roadsides. Very intense purple color. And here's another wildflower you'll find along roadsides frequently. This is the very low growing golden eye phlox. Phlox Romeriana. It was difficult to get a good exposure, but there's another short clip at the end. And this is Crow Poison, Nothoscordum bivalvi. I don't know if it poisons crows. However, it's similar to alliums, many of which are edible, but this is not edible. These uh, yellow flowers are green thread, Thelosperma filifolium, quite common along roadsides. There's a similar flower that's more common in moist areas called Coreopsis that's uh, similar in appearance to the green thread, but these are more abundant. And Firewheel or Indian Blanket. Gallardia pulchella, quite a common annual wildflower. They vary a little bit in color. These are slightly more orange, I think, in this clip, although the lighting may have something to do with that as well. And this is one of my absolute favorite wildflowers, Celestials, which is a celestial blue. This is in the iris family, or related to iris at any rate. Nemostylus geminiflora. And I found a small patch of these. This is Prairie Fleabane, Origeron modestus, a wildflower I featured in one of my winter videos because of the winter foliage rosettes. And absolutely 
packed with flowers is this Anacacho orchid tree, Bauhenia lunarioides. This is a rare tree native to the hill country that's quite commonly cultivated now. And here's a specimen in the San Antonio Botanic Garden in a patch of blue bonnets. This is white milkwort, Polygala alba. The deer don't seem to bother this plant. And it grows in very inhospitable, rocky areas. Another wildflower in rocky locations is rock lettuce, Pinaropapus roseus. I featured this in one of my winter videos also because of the winter rosettes of foliage. And here it is flowering. This is a flower that's just about to open. And here's one that has opened. This is primrose jasmine, quite a common cultivated shrub from China. Unfortunately, the flowers are not fragrant, but they're quite pretty in the spring. Here's a wildflower that you won't find very often in the hill country, basically just along the eastern edge in a few places. It's more common along the coast. And oddly enough, the only other place that it grows natively is in southern South America. This is Herbertia lahui, the prairie nymph. A very interesting geometrically shaped flower. And here is Wiesatch daisy, Amblyolepis setigera. And nearby I found these wine cups, Calaroe involucrata, which are rather low growing. And this is the tall wine cup, which is much taller. There are actually a couple of different species of these. I think this is Calaroe leocarpa. And the color is very intense, as you can see here. Barbara's Buttons, Marshalia caspitosa. This is a plant you'll find in dry, rocky places. And this is Engelmann sage, one of the salvias. Salvia Engelmannii. These are growing on a high rocky ridge. They like dry locations. This is a plant that was named in honor of the German-American botanist George Engelmann, who lived back in the 1800s. And another plant named in his honor is the Engelmann daisy. These are quite common along roadsides. Engelmannia pinnatifida. This is false day flower or widow's tears, Tenantia anomala. Here's a plant I don't see very often, but when you do find it, it's usually in large colonies. This is blue curls, Facelia congesta. Here we have yarrow, Achillea millifolium. Not very common, but always nice to see. And pink mimosa, not to be confused with the tree that's sometimes planted, also called mimosa. This is mimosa borealis, a small thorny native shrub. And here's one growing in habitat in a rather barren location. This is Pyracantha, a variety called Mojave, which is one of the blight-resistant varieties. So you can see Pyracantha is not only for berries. The flowers in the spring are also nice. You will find Pyracantha listed as an invasive plant but I don't think it's much of a threat because I rarely see it in the wild. And I hope you've enjoyed the video.